Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander viewers are warned that the following information contains references and images of Aboriginal people who have passed away. How did the skull of Onyong, a man whose historical significance spanned the meeting of two cultures and more than two centuries, come to reside on another's table as a sugar bowl? How could a white man known as Smithy have viewed Onyong's dead body with such little regard? when this Indigenous warrior had earned the respect of his own people and many of the white settlers during his life. To understand this, we need to look at the different perspectives that people held at the time when Onyong was alive. Born around 1800, Onyong was a young warrior when European settlers first arrived to the Canberra region in the late 1820s. During his life, Onyong's significance to his people, the Nambury, was evidenced through his considerable interactions with the white settlers. Whilst Aboriginal society did not have chiefs, due to Onyong's age, gender and skill as a warrior, he would have been respected by his people to engage with the newcomers as their representative. In retrospect, Onyong's significance could be viewed as even more important as he was to become an ancestor who witnessed the coming of white man and the resultant upheaval of an ancient culture. Today, Onyong's name lives on through his descendants and in various stories and publications. From the white settler's perspective, it is also historically evidence that Onyong was held in high esteem. He assisted Garrett Cotter, stockman for local landowner Francis Kenny, and as a result, a lifelong friendship was formed. In recent times, Cotter's great-grandson erected a memorial in Onyong's honour, further confirming the significance of the friendship. Other local settlers also noted him as a man of worth, including William Wright, who was witness to Onyong's burial ceremony. In 1831, Onyong was also presented with a king's plate by local white authorities who viewed him as chief of his people. In 1852, Onyong died at Kapakumbalong. He was given a traditional burial as befitted a great warrior and the location of the grave was referred to for many years as Onyong's Hill. Over the next decade, a man employed at Kapakumbalong disturbed the entombed warrior's body. As recalled by William Wright, a man named Smithy dug up the skull and with questionable taste had it made into a sugar bowl, which I actually saw in use on his table. Archaeologist Josephine Flood states in one of her books that such excavations of recent graves are now considered reprehensible by archaeologists. However, this has not always been the case. In line with Darwinian views of the late 1800s, Indigenous Australians were considered by many as a primitive or lesser race, as late as 1941, the faces of an Aboriginal man and woman were depicted amongst other Australian fauna in the commemorative courtyard of Canberra's War Memorial and remain there still. Views such as these help explain why numerous culturally significant Indigenous sites have been disturbed and destroyed since European settlement of Australia in 1788. So could it be that to Smithy, Onyong's skull was no more than a curiosity or trophy? Whether these acts of disturbance have been due to racism, elitism or ignorance, in the name of scientific or historical preservation or through ongoing development, is open for conjecture. Irrespective of the reasons, Onyong's final resting place in Thawa is no longer public knowledge, as are many important Indigenous sites, now known only to the local people to ensure that cultural respect be preserved.